How's it going, guys? Sorry about that. Seems my test stream key got written onto my main profile. So I was streaming on the wrong channel. Problems. This is what happens when you have to test things. <sighs> How's it going? I started sketching and blabbing on about my new microphone. And I wasn't even on the right channel. Hope you guys are doing good. Thanks for being here. Today we're working on a walrus hero. Not really sure why. I kind of... I kind of was racking my brain for other mythological creatures that uh, that the good folks at Robot have not covered yet, and uh, I was coming up short. A lot of a lot of kind of stuff that doesn't really work well for a hero, even for monsters, but uh, not so much for a hero. So I came up with this. Wow, you sound so different. I do. You hear my real voice now. That's right. New mic is kind of amazing. Let me know about audio levels and stuff, because I'm still kind of tweaking it. I didn't have nearly the kind of time I wanted to really kind of mess with things. Kind of did some quick and dirty tests this morning, which resulted in my stream key being overwritten with my test stream, stream key, even though I made a new profile for it. Hmm, it happens. That microphone, not a likes it. New mic, so great. Clear, so clear. See now, you can never again be like, ah, your mic is terrible. Now you can just be like, ah, your voice is terrible. And then I can cry. Cry into my brand new microphone. See, now I can't blame audio equipment anymore. It's all user error from here on down. Which I'm excited about. So yeah, Walrus Hero. Not really sure why. Just sort of seemed like a good idea. How was your guys' Christmas? I hope it was awesome. Hope you got to spend it with some friends and family and, uh, and got some cool loot. Who got good loot? I know Osvaldo got tamales. That's better than loot. Hope you saved me some tamales. We made so much food. It's funny because we actually like, tried to cut down the amount of food that we made this year because we only had a few people. Usually our Christmases are a bigger deal. But uh, but this year we only had uh, we had a couple guests. And we had friends over uh, the previous day. So it definitely kind of reduced the stress level a little bit. It was nice considering, you know, new baby and all. And, uh, and then last night, it was funny because the Christmas Eve night, oh man, Tyler was so good. He was such a good kid. He went to sleep. We got tons. We got tons of rest. The next morning was was awesome. And then last night he was a monster. Yep, that is what happened. And uh, and I was up until three a.m. deal with him. And then uh, and the wife took over, and she was up until like I don't know, like five or something. Good times. Children are so unpredictable. The only thing predictable about a child is the arc that they will travel when you fling them out of a window. So yeah, so that was a thing that happened. Not a big deal. I'm functional today. So, uh, so I call that a win. But I am greatly enjoying the new microphone. So great. And now you can really tell how bad the, uh, the 
headset I had was. It was so bad. My god. I don't know what part of my voice it was picking up, but it was bad. This is much better. Really excited to use the arm that I got for it, although the arm did not come with a proper mounting uh, mounting hardware. It only came with a... Uh, it can only mount a 3 8 microphone, like uh, attachment, and it needs to... Or wait, no, fi uh, yeah, 3 8 and I need the 5 8 So I need to buy an adapter, which I ordered. It's going to take a while to come in, but then when it does, I'll get to be able to get the microphone a little closer, kind of angle it where I want it. Right now it's kind of sitting behind my my Cintiq. It's not in a not in a perfect place. It's uh, it's a little further away than I would than I would like it. I'd say it's about a I don't know, a foot and a half or so and I'd like to get that distance down a bit. So we'll uh, we'll work on that. We're going to that's going to come in going to come in about a week, maybe 2 weeks that part. It was cheap though, it was like 3 bucks. Why they couldn't include a part, a three dollar part, in this arm beyond me. Okay, so big old beefy walrus guy. Uh, he's gonna have some shaggy fur going on. Uh, along the top here, like that. And then uh, big tree trunk like appendages that you could probably call an arm going on here. Just like that. So now I'm wondering, Oswaldo, you say, I sound so different. Do I sound different good? Or do I sound different bad? I sound less like a cartoon character. Which, in my opinion, is bad. My voice no longer fits my personality. <laughs> Craycraft says I liked the old mic. I hate you, Craycraft. I hate you. And I and I hope nobody gives you any food today. You, you not, maybe maybe you don't starve, but you suffer a little bit. Hunger pangs. I gotta learn to be more mean. I'm not good at this. I hope you are uncomfortable, but not to an extreme measure. Yeah, that's right. I said it. The bad quality gave you character. Wow. I knew it. Now I'm boring. Thanks, Nana. It's all her fault. I blame Nana. Shaggy walrus dude here. Um, I'm not sure what I should do with his legs. I feel like he, he needs to have something funky going on with his feet. I guess they should be like, like flipper feet or something. Something like that. This is the reality, is now that I have a good mic, you can just tell how boring my voice really is. That's, that's the reality. Up your production game. What? Go. Oh. Now I can't rely on, on, on cheap tricks like a crappy, crappy mic. I'd be more entertaining now. Lame. Guys, I'm too busy arting. Look at this. Look at this beautiful walrus character. 
He's uh, stoic. Walrus is stoic. He being so self conscious. Oh my god, shut up. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. So, Orcs, uh, meet your matches back tonight. Not sure if I'm going to be playing tonight. I want to. We'll see how that goes. Not really sure what the rest of my day is going to hold. We had a ridiculous mess in the basement to clean up. Our kid had a friend over um, Christmas Eve, and they ripped open a travel pillow, and it was filled with those little tiny styrofoam beads, which they decided to use as snow. And I came downstairs and I saw it everywhere, and they're like, look, we made snow! And I had to resist the urge to scatter their innards across my basement. Which I was successful in doing. Um, not scattering the innards. Which I guess is good? But man, that mess. Oof. So that was a thing. On the bright side, they didn't burn the place down. So... Winning? Just needs a fishing bowl. Yeah, probably. Look, WoW did it. WoW's like the Simpsons. WoW did it. Okay. I'm gonna start like accentuating some of the features now. Try to like push it more. Because now that I've got like the basics of this, I can really kind of try to take this further. for fish. Start making this a little bit more interesting of a character. Try to throw in some uh, some orcs design stuff in here now. gonna let me see throw on the shoulder armor because yeah they're big and these guys will be big and tough and, and slow so I figure like some aesthetic that's kind of close to the heavy orc warriors something like that anyway these guys are big and tough so you might want to accentuate that uh, that aspect of them in this design right um and I guess a couple pieces of armor plate here around the feet uh, hmm. okay you should have some like leather banding that kind of holds this stuff in place and uh, loincloth because he's a walrus um, and uh, wal walruses have loin I have no idea loincloth 
because loin cloth. It's got a huge body. It's gonna kind of come around back here, so I gotta try to curve some of this stuff around, some of this design stuff around him. Really get a, a good feel for the, like his girth. Alrighty, so now I'm going to go with, uh, start into some final line. One of these days soon, I'm going to have to do, um, like uh, during the break, I'm going to have to do a viewer request. So, if you guys have any cool ideas for something you want me to draw, uh, whether or not it's orcs related. I'm trying to do a lot of orc stuff uh, over the, the holidays just because I have some time. Uh, so I can like really, I can really sit down and like render these things out. Get them, you know, get those concepts refined and stuff. A lot of times when I'm doing hero concepts, I don't have the time. I have to, have to complete them as quickly as possible. And it's really nice to be able to to devote some more time to this sort of thing because I really enjoy doing it. So yeah, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do a viewer request thing. So if you guys have cool ideas that you want me to sketch, even if it's just something silly, like, uh, you know, blood spike doing something dumb. Um, we'll, we'll do that on, uh, on one episode over the next couple weeks or next week or so. I think that would be enjoyable. Nana has ideas. Oh God. How did I know? Look, we've already talked about this. I'm not drawing you, Hogarth, in a banana hammock. No matter how many times you ask me to. Now, if Osvaldo wants Hogarth in a banana hammock, well, I'm gonna hook him up. Well, you got ideas, let's hear them. Let's hear some ideas. I gotta farm the ideas now. I'm not gonna let you put me on the spot and be like, just do this real quick. I have to think about these things. Come on, Ozzy. You know you like a little, uh, little, uh, little Hogarth there. No shame in it. It's okay. It's a studly man. All right. Um, I think I gotta this down a bit my ideas are secret wait but you're all I have ideas and then you're not gonna tell me what's that about look if it's about the global teleport we know Nana has to keep her idea secret because she's going to be the new balance uh, balance developer. She can't give away these secrets. They're going into the game straight, straight from the from the mind of Nana into the game. Stop crying. Stop it. Osvaldo says, "I appreciate the human body. It's true. It's a wonderful, wonderful feat of engineering." of biological engineering.
So I'm kind of going for this thing where, like, if you look just up at this part of his face, it kind of resembles a little bit of uh, some of the, uh, the orc design. I'm hoping that comes across. Trying to take that into consideration. A little extra darkness around the eyes. Enough of this uh, own to you stuff that I'm starting to get some of the design aspect down. I wonder if they have like a design bible. Some places do that. I know a lot of animation uh, places will have a design bible because, I mean, you got all these people drawing stuff and they have to draw things on model. So it actually becomes a thing where. People, like some of the supervisors will start writing down notes, be like, do this, don't do this, um, make sure that this line comes to this part of the face, stuff like that, like really, really specific stuff that can, you know, really determine whether or not something looks on style. Looks like an ape nose. That's kind of what the orcs' noses look like. Hiding a little bit of it though, because it's stubby. Should be, should be a bit higher. Part of why it looks like an ape nose too is the fact that they have this like long upper lip on the orcs. But that's actually kind of part of uh, the design. They vary a little bit on the what's it on the the light orcs, but a lot of the heavy orcs and stuff have this kind of thing going on. It's kind of like makes them look primal, you know, and primitive. But yeah, there's definitely a few things about uh, about the orc uh, designs for the various orc schemes that uh, that kind of lends that um, that feel to them that they're kind of ape-like. It's actually one of the things I really like about their design. They're not the only ones who do it. Um, Warhammer does it. Uh, Warcraft does it to a certain extent. Uh, they've they've peeled back from that a little bit, like where it's. They have a, they're a pretty unique look for their orcs at this point, but when they were first starting out, they had a pretty similar, I, I guess it was, it was Warhammer that did it first, and then a, a lot of these other places kind of took that design and spun it a little bit so that it was closer to something that they could call their own. Why are you talking about orcs as supposed to be walrus? Because I'm trying to make, I'm trying to give little hints at uh, the idea that it's uh, that's related to the orcs in some way. Like, okay, if you take the yetis, right? You look at the yetis, they're basically, like the concept behind those guys is that they're basically an orc that lives in like, in the cold, in the winter environment. Like if you look at it, you can tell that they're kind of designed almost directly from the orcs, only they live in a cold environment, so they develop, like, they, they grew that fur, and they have that kind of bluish tinge to, to be able to blend in with their environment a bit. So I'm trying to think of the same thing with this. I'm trying to think that, like, you know, similar idea, evolutionary offshoot of an orc that lived in a cold, aquatic environment.
Like, I don't know if this is like, if that's canon that, uh, you know, yetis are, are just cold, like, you know, cold dwelling orcs or not, but that's just how my brain interprets it. Uh, guys, it's so nice to like have peace of mind that my mic isn't just gonna fail on me constantly. I really do like this thing. It's very cool. And y'all are just gonna have to get used to my new voice. So suck it. Except my new voice is my old voice. And it just sounds normal now. It is weird though, like, you know, when uh, you, you have like a good friend or something and they've had like this cell phone forever and then they get a new cell phone and then they sound completely different when they call you and you're like, what? What is going on? Who is this person? Okay. I'm gonna have these plates go here. Calling friends? Oh, Osvaldo. I'm sorry. I think I just made Osvaldo sad. He just re-examined his life. I'm sorry, man. How about calling your grandma? Does that, does that work? Everybody calls her grandma. This is the thing about being a grandma. You can't, you're not allowed to like, to be able to, to use instant messaging and stuff. It's just, it's not allowed. You have to call people on the phone. On like your rotary phone. It's gonna game me. I've got a Wacom tablet. I'm just trying to learn and uh, uh, learn it and how I should uh, do brush strokes, etc. Well, uh, you come to the right place. If you want any tips on using uh, equipment like that, I'm your, I'm your dude. I can help you out. Um, one thing I would recommend very first thing is uh, make sure make sure that uh, that you when you draw if you want your final lines and stuff like that draw pretty zoomed in um, a lot of digital paint programs function better when you're zoomed in there's a reason I do it um, if you're further out and especially if you're drawing slowly like drawing like slow lines see they have a tendency to be jittery whereas if I do the same thing when it's zoomed in the line is a lot smoother and it just has to do with like uh, with how it samples each uh, each input. That's tip number one. No one call. <laughs> no, no. Who calls people? Texting is way faster when making plans. Hey, let's go eat at X at X time. Is this is that the only way you communicate with people? Be like, hey, let's go to uh, you know X burger joint. Come on, Ozzy. You don't call your friends to ask about their feelings? It's gonna game me says, I'm probably gonna get paint tool side today because Photoshop is too much. I agree, Photoshop is too much, but if you want a really good alternative to uh, Photoshop that has all the same shortcuts and uh, frankly, a much better um, brush engine than Photoshop even has, you should check out Mega Studio 5. Uh, and if you can't find it, it, they have it under two names, Mega Studio 5 or uh, I think it's Clip Studio. Clip Studio Pro, but Mega Studio 5 is amazing and very cheap. You'll probably be able to get it for uh, 70 bucks or less and it can work in PSDs. So all the work you do can be given to uh, somebody who does work in Photoshop or whatever um, and it's all compatible. It's pretty awesome. Paint Tool Site is great though. Um, so if you're, I can't remember how much, how much it is. I know it's, it's really cheap, but I highly recommend Manga Studio 5. It's really, really, really amazing. It has some cool stuff that Photoshop doesn't, like the ability to blend paint colors with um, a color below it on like a layer below. You can actually like mix paint um, live, which Photoshop does not do. It has blending modes. Photoshop has blending modes, but it doesn't mix paint the way that traditional paint would mix. Oswald <laughs> says, we have Bumble for real talk. Lou says, theater mode, finally. Yes, theater mode. 
loves me the theater mode. It's pretty great. Do enjoy theater mode. Other tips for working with a Wacom. Make sure your Wacom is um, firmly planted on whatever surface you have it on. Desk or whatever. Really, like, it needs to be very firmly planted because if it moves, you're going to have a bad time. Because, like, your hand will get all used to drawing at this weird um, uh, kind of disconnected angle, right? And then if the thing moves, suddenly all your brush strokes are at a different relative angle because, like, let's say it rotated a little bit. It's a really big deal. So make sure that you plant it very well. I don't know that I would recommend this, but I have gone in, in the past when I first started learning on a Wacom tablet, I went so far as to buy um, Velcro tape, like tape, like Velcro that has tape on the back and taped my tablet to my desk using like, and I put like the soft side of the Velcro on the bottom of the tablet and like the abrasive side on the actual desk. So I did that so that it would guarantee not move. But don't go so, don't go that far unless it's absolutely necessary. But make sure that it stays in a place where you're not going to bump it or whatever and move it. Yeah, what he's trying to say is get some hot glue and glue that thing to your desk. Um, no. I mean, maybe? No. Don't do that. Well, no. Mm. Don't listen to Crick Rap. His ideas are terrible. Look, he's from Finland. He doesn't even know what a Wacom is. If it's not a sauna, he doesn't understand it. So, uh, yeah, so that's the second tip. Another one would be, most people have a tendency to draw with their wrist and their fingers. Um, and while, if that's your comfort zone, you're gonna get the best results doing that just because you've done it for so long. But I would recommend, and this is a general purpose drawing tip, I'm gonna pick up an animation. You can be putting a lot of hours into learning how to draw well on a Wacom. It's just, it takes a long time. And uh, your hand's gonna start hurting. That's a reality of it, especially if you're drawing with your wrists and your fingers. Try to draw with your whole arm. Your shoulder and your elbow, your whole arm. That will allow you, because you're using the bigger muscles in your arm, it will allow you to draw for way, way longer. Like, this is an animator thing that people who are animators, they like, you know, work really long hours and everything. And if you draw in that kind of manner with the, your fingers and your wrist, you're, you're gonna have to stop after a couple hours. It's just, your, your hand will hurt. Whereas if you're drawing with your whole arm, you can do it for just like the entire day. Just keep going forever. Um, it's, it's worth getting used to, believe me. Craigraph says, I do, I have one. What, a sauna? I know, you tell me about the sauna all the time. God, stop talking about your sauna. We're talking about Wacoms. Jeez, Cray. It's always he's always gonna change the subject to saunas. He's like, oh, I got a sauna. I know you don't understand Wacoms, Cray. And you're really excited to talk about saunas. But that's not what we're talking about right now. Just let it go. Focus VP, hello, hello! How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Drawn a walrus hero for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Just kind of popped into my head. I was trying to think of something to draw today. Walrus hero got in there, it's stuck. Would make it go away. <laughs> this is Tusker from Dota 2. It looks a lot like like other. Look, I mean, everything's been done, right? But yeah, it's uh, it's been done before. The whole walrus thing. I'm just trying to give him my own spin. I actually don't know a lot of the other heroes. I haven't done. I don't. I don't play League, and I don't play Dota. So, if they exist, it's not because I'm copying them. I'm doing it on my own.
Let me see. Okay. I don't have time to play many games, honestly. Play lots of orcs because I'm a huge fan. Huge fan of the franchise. I really enjoy the gameplay in orcs too, just like in uh, Orcs Unchained. So, having a ton of fun with it. So, I'm playing a lot of that. But to be perfectly honest, I don't have much time for games. I wish I did. Got children to take care of. Being an adult is terrible. I don't recommend it. Always wanted to learn to draw well, uh, but it is necessary to spend a lot of time. It is. It really is. That's. Uh, I'm of the opinion that anyone can learn to draw if they're willing to put in the thousands and thousands of hours it takes. Like, I really do believe it. Uh, you can learn. It's a skill. But if you don't really, really, really enjoy it, you're just... It's going to be impossible to put the time in. You just... You won't be able to do it. It's one of those things. I've had to sacrifice a lot of fun um, over the years to draw instead because I wanted I wanted to draw really bad. I wanted to make this my career, drawing. And um, so, man, there's been a lot of times where my friends would have been like, hey, we got a party, we're going to this, this, this pub or whatever. Come and hang out. And I'd be like, well, I gotta, I gotta do this thing. And I, I actually did a web calling for a few years specifically so that I had something that had deadlines. Right? And it was it was tough, man. It was tough, but I put in the time, and it helped a ton. Giving myself something to work on that I had to be responsible for, that people were going to be expecting to be posted and everything. It, it made it so that I had to draw at that kind of that kind of pace and of that kind of like consistency and frequency, um, where I would build my skill so it was marketable. It was worth it, um, in my opinion. But yeah, man, I missed out on a lot of stuff. They say you can get good at anything if you put in 10,000 hours. It's true of art, too. Of course, when people are kids, a lot of people will be predisposed to doing art. I still believe, honestly, that uh, that, that has a lot to do with those people that really enjoy it. The tablet that I, well, okay, the tablet I'm using, I'm using a Cintiq. So I have a Wacom Cintiq, uh, which is like a tablet monitor. I had a, uh, what was it? Wacom, what was the tablet I had? It was a, a Wacom uh, Intuos 2, I believe I had. Um, and I, I didn't like it so, too much. I mean, I got used to it, but I don't like the disconnect personally. I like to be able to like look down at the thing I'm drawing, so, so it's more like paper, right? When you're like looking directly at it. I had a really, really hard time getting used to the disconnect uh, of like looking up at a screen and drawing down on a table. It was really strange for me, and I just didn't like it. And I was working at an animation studio at the time, and they had Cintiqs in house, and I knew that this technology existed. So I just said, you know what? I'm gonna make this happen. And I bought a lot of really bad tablet monitors until I finally settled on forking out the dough for Cintiq. Kier says, how do you get such great looking lines? Do you have any special setups for your brushes? Actually, I use the default Photoshop brushes. I've changed around the um, the location of them, but this is the default. I'll just show you. This is the default Photoshop uh, hard round brush that has pressure sensitivity. I just It has a smoothing on by default. And these are the default shape dynamics. They have pen pressure for size jitter. And, uh, and that's it. There's nothing else going on here. Um, and what I do is, like I said, um, I draw with my whole shoulder. So my, uh, like right here, when I'm doing this line, I'm actually pivoting my elbow, right? So I'm drawing with my elbow, and if I want to do vertical lines, I use my shoulder. That's gonna immediately help with your line quality. And then also zoom in. Zooming in will make your line quality really good. And then from that point, Save real quick. 
And from that point, uh, it comes down to confidence in your lines, fast strokes, quick lines. If you do your line quick and steady and, co and with confidence, it's going to be straighter. It's going to be, uh, it's going to have less, less jitter to it. Uh, the faster you draw a line, the straighter it's going to be. If I draw this line really, really, really slow, it's pretty straight, but th there's some jitter to it. You can see that there's some jitter to it. If I do this fast, there's less jitter. Confidence in your lines. Uh, size of the canvas, what do you use? Right now, I'm using a canvas that is, uh, it's standard US size paper, so 8.5 by 11 at 300 dpi. That's what I, that's what I use, generally. I can work a lot bigger uh, if I'm working on a project that requires a lot of detail. I will work larger. I finally have a rig that can handle that. It's been a while since I... <laughs> I was working on a pretty, pretty old rig uh, for a very long time. Um, and so it was really hard for me to push it beyond this. I got kind of used to this, this kind of level of resolution. But I was fortunate enough to... Uh, to be able to finally get myself a really powerful rig. So I can work much higher than this, but uh, my go-to thing, if I'm just sketching or whatever, if I just say, hey, I'm gonna draw a thing, uh, US paper size, 300 DPI. 300 DPI is your basic uh, printer, printer recommended resolution. That's what they want. They want 300 DPI minimum. If it's black and white, they actually want more. But if you're doing color, you probably are doing color. Um, printers want 300 dpi. Not a problem. I am happy to share tips and tricks. Please feel free to ask whatever you want about art. I am an open book as far as uh, art knowledge goes. In fact, if you want more specific stuff, I do tutorials on Tuesday. Tuesday is tutorial day on my stream. So if you want some specific tips, you want me to cover a subject matter or something like that, swing by on Tuesday and I will happily uh, make that the subject of the Tutorial Tuesday. And you can ask me questions live on the stream and I'll do my best to help you out. I really do enjoy teaching, so please don't be, don't be shy about asking questions. So we got this kind of standard looking uh, round shoulder pad here. I'm gonna put like a big spike in this in the side here, just for some, uh, just to, to make the silhouette more interesting. Like right now we've got this kind of big round shape. I wanna break that up. Like he's gonna have like this, uh, this um, quiver with these big spears and stuff in it, but I wanna break up this shape. So I'm gonna put like a big chunk here. I feel like he needs something here. I might put, um, I don't know. I was thinking about putting some kind of main type decoration but I don't know I don't know if that's that's right for this design but I definitely need to break up this silhouette somehow totally doing that that's awesome man I look forward to seeing you on Tuesdays the last time we did tutorial Tuesday it was unfortunately like right before uh, the, the Christmas the Christmas season, which Christmas has altered things a little bit for me, but I'm going to be getting back to a normal schedule uh, next week, even though, you know, it's technically still Christmas holidays for a lot of people, but uh, I need to get back to a, something resembling more of a, a normal schedule. So we'll be doing Tutorial Tuesday, but last last Tuesday, I uh, last Tuesday I did uh, more Hero Concept. I've been doing Hero Concepts lately just because, you know, so nice little break. I, I've actually got a break from my for my day job right now um, for Christmas time. They, they closed down the, uh, the studios working for, for Christmas. So I don't have any work for now. Uh, normally I do art for a board game company called uh, Tasty Minstrel Games, TMG. It's a reference to uh, Monty Python. Uh, they ate Robin's Minstrel and there was much rejoicing. Uh, yeah, I didn't even get that. So I do that for my day job, but uh, Currently, they're closed down for a little while for the Christmas break, so I got free time. I figured why not do some hero designs, have some fun, devote more time to it than I usually get to. He needs a mohawk. That's exactly the kind of thing I was thinking about. I just don't know if it's going to look right. I'll probably throw it in. There's no shame in throwing it in and seeing if it looks okay. have break it up and stuff like so it's like a chunky one I don't know 
I have no idea. Maybe like a mohawk of razor blades. No idea. So we'll put in some more uh, interesting design stuff here. Just some uh, little bit of decorative uh, paneling to to the armor. Just suggesting places. I feel like I should have some bits hanging down off of it. Let's see how that looks after. Let me just complete this. And then we'll see if having hanging pieces of metal might look cool, maybe. spikes the angle is wrong I don't know why I did that angle gotta think of perspective afro yeah that's a good idea too afro no no bull cut done oh man bull cut can't go wrong with a bull cut it's in the shape of a bowl Or, 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 stick with me here. Stick with me. We'll give him the Joe Dirt. We'll give him a Joe Dirt. We'll just erase this bit, get a little spiky bit. Long hair. I mean, not just a mullet, like a full-on Joe Dirt. Big-ass afro with a pick in it. Can the pick be shaped like a fish? Because if so, I'm on. I'm on board. Big old fish shaped afro pick. I'm I'm on board for this design suggestion. See, you, you, you wonder why Nana has the, the mod sword, right? It's because of the suggestions like this. It really takes my art to the next level. The, the afros, I mean. The, the, the constant suggestion of afros. Make it out of fish bones. Come on, Molten. All right. Well, by definition, a fishbone pick would be shaped like a fish, right? God, do I have to give everything away? Thanks for ruining it. Spoilers. And see, this is why Osvaldo does not have a mod sword. Just giving away all my design ideas. Hey. Not, not, not as, not as sad. She's, she's like, no, oh, you really should have an afro. Look, I'll give him an afro if you want. I, this is a service I can provide. I'm not against the afro, but I gotta tease you about suggesting it. That's what, uh, if you guys are wondering, that's what Nana really wants out of a man, is a, is a healthy afro. Just a, a luscious, thick afro. I'll do the afro. I'll totally do the afro. No, no, I'm going to do the afro. I'm not going to do that afro. Afros are happening. They're not happening. I, I just think the afro is such a good idea. It's not a good idea.
I think I prefer curly Jew hair. Wow. Wow, and you made me say it. It's kind of an afro. Some John, John Snowish. Oh. Oh. And the teen stash, right? You grow nothing, Jon Snow, on your lip. It's a troubled young man, that Jon Snow. Why did I make those chain links so big? No stash. No, no, it's already out. It's fine. Look, I'm not gonna judge you for what you find appealing in the male face. I mean, if you're all about that, that wispy, wispy looking teen stash, I mean, I'm not gonna judge, it's fine. They call it the flavor saver. The stash. Now, are you just against the stash in general, or do you just prefer like a full on, you know, Ron Burgundy? These inquiring minds want to know. Because you know at that point it's not it's not prickly anymore, then it's soft. And luscious. Like like a tiny golden retriever on someone's lip. <laughs> Which tablet do you have? Uh, I'm using a Wacom Cintiq. It is a uh, tablet monitor. I can link it actually. That's just the first link I came across that has a Cintiq. Mine is not the 22 inch one. Mine is a 20 inch widescreen one that was a uh, limited edition. They didn't make it for very long. Avaldo's <laughs> Nana says, just not a fan of the stash. Just depends on the man, I guess. Uh, Osvaldo says, man, I shaved on Christmas Eve to at least appear nice to the family. I regretted it the day of. <laughs> Uh, it's gonna give you says I have a Wacom Intuos Pro 5 small. That's cool, dude. The, the Intuos 5s are really good. Um <laughs> Osvaldo's lamenting the loss of his beard. I'm sorry, Ozzy. I, I am lamenting it too. I already miss your beard and I haven't even seen what it looks like without it. I ain't never getting rid of my beard. I, my wife has made me shave my beard off once or twice, and every single time I regret it instantly, and then she does too. But she keeps telling me, shave off your beard, I hate it. And then I'll shave it and she's like, you look like a baby. I think she just likes it when I'm miserable. But yeah, the Intuos 5s are good. They're good tablets. Um, I wanted a larger tablet because I like to make big sweeping lines, right? I feel like they're better uh, for that. But again, 
I just bought a, uh, a second... Okay, well... I actually bought uh, um, a 12-inch Cintiq as well for mobile uh, mobile setup because I mean, like, I draw a lot. I'm constantly working, so uh, th there'd be times where when I get a lot of my contracts I'm working at the same time, I'm spending too much time in my office and I don't get to see my family very much. So I bought a 12-inch a Cintiq uh, to work on the couch with, and I kind of had immediate buyer's remorse because. It's not really a good mobile solution. It has a lot of cords and like little power brick things and stuff that you have to plug into it. And it takes a like it takes long enough to put together that you don't feel like you're just picking it up and drawing. You feel like you have to set the dang thing up every time. And so I did I just was not a fan. It was it didn't do what I wanted it to do. So recently I just replaced it with a Microsoft Surface Pro 1, like the old one, uh, the uh, the original Surface Pro. Um, and I love it. I think it's a really, really great drawing platform, but it's small. Like it's a 10.6 inch screen. It's really small, but the thing, it's a Wacom digitizer. Uh, it does a great job. It, and it really is like a mobile drawing platform. I can just pick it up and just start drawing. Uh, I paired it with a Razer Nostromo for a mini keyboard because I use shortcuts. I use like Photoshop shortcuts constantly. If you don't use Photoshop shortcuts, I don't think that's necessary, but I do. <laughs> as well as it's cold outside my face. Uh, it says, imagine that's your legs and crotch and now you're wearing a dress and it's windy. You cry, baby. <laughs> and Osvaldo says, this is why you would never want to be a lady. Osvaldo, don't, don't pretend you don't want to be a lady. Everybody wants to be a lady. Then we could be purdy. Pretty, pretty ladies, instead of horrible, horrible, ugly men. Look at ourselves in the mirror and cry every time. I just want to be pretty. My wife convinced me to wax my leg once, so I would know how it feels. Let me tell you something. I got hairy ass legs. That was not fun would not recommend it to anyone ever. Don't fall for that trap. It's not funny. Don't do it. Stop laughing. Stop it. Man stench is my favorite smell. Well, it's a... Uh, I guess it's a good thing. And Osvaldo, it's called musk, not man stench. God. Get some culture. Girls, all this makeup and stuff, guys, all natural. She was so mean about it too. She laughed at me in my pain. I did it to support her. And the pain was unbearable. On the bright side, I didn't have like some giant, like, you know, European woman named Helga or something doing it to me, so I think maybe I lucked out. I don't know. I can only imagine. What do I want to do next here? I think I'm going to leave this top bit um, bare arm, like just the fur, and then I'll go to the armor down here. Shut up with your Zeds. Oh, I have all the Zeds. Look. Look, just because I know how to spell things properly, don't be hating. Look, man, if you if you need some U's, I can lend you some U's so that you can spell words properly. In fact, you, you guys could, like, you know, maybe stop spelling through without the, the G-H and the O. That might help. Start there. And then you can work up to spelling color correctly. Mega Studio is only $38 right now. Get it. If it's on sale like that, I'm telling you, it's a fantastic program. Um, it, it really, really, truly is a Photoshop alternative in every way you can imagine. The brush engine is great. Inking on it is 
amazing. You can do vector inking if you want to, although I think their raster inking is really, really, really good. Um, the color stuff is fantastic. All the, the, the shortcuts are almost identical to Photoshop. Um, it has built-in panel modes if you want to do comics and stuff like that. Like it automatically cuts panels and stuff. It has word balloon things. The only thing that I don't like about Manga Studio is that its text engine is bad. Like be, to be able to put in text, you don't have the kind of freedom that you do with Photoshop for text. But I mean, if you're doing it for art, man, it's really good. Like I bought a copy. I just, I've gotten so used to doing Photoshop and it's just so, it's like my comfort zone now. I just, like I actually prefer the, like, okay, I think that the Manga Studios inking feels more like real ink, like real pen and ink. And uh, there's some great brushes out there, uh, that, like extra brushes you can buy, even though you can make your own brushes. There's this guy, Friendin, uh, you can find him on Twitter, at Friendin, and he uh, he does a whole, he sells a whole bunch of uh, custom brushes he made, they're fantastic, uh, but like like I said, you can make your own. Uh, there's this guy, Doug, I don't know his last name, but it's like, I think his thing is Manga Studio Guide, like if you go on YouTube, and he has all sorts of awesome tutorials and everything on how to set up Manga Studio and how to use it properly. <laughs> you can write. There you go. Um, but yeah, it's it's really good. It's probably the only other piece of art software that I've purchased that I haven't felt bad about purchasing. Like, and that even goes to Sketchbook Pro. I like Sketchbook Pro for sketching, right? It's really good if you're just doing pencil work. The moment you need to ink something, I hate it. I just, I really, really dislike it. I can't get nice crisp line like I want. And I know that this is not realistic line, right? Like this kind of look is, you can't really achieve this kind of stuff without like, you know, using a brush, right? Like like an ink, ink with a brush. And even that, you're talking about like years and years of practice to be able to get this kind of like cleanliness with the line. But that's what I like. I want this kind of clean line. And you can't do it in uh, Sketchbook. Well, you can, but it, I don't know. It never works for me. I've used other people's settings where they do it and I just, it doesn't function. I'm scared I'm not going to like it. You should do it, man. It's $38. It's worth it. Um, takes a, it'll take a little bit to get used to just because, you know, it's a new program, but I'm telling you, it's really, really good. Definitely worth it. Uh, I've seen some people do really, really amazing stuff with it. Uh, you can use it for digital painting very well. You can do, you can do anything with it. It's, it's great. There's gonna be, there's gonna come a time where I'm going to make the swap over to Manga Studio 100%. It's just, like I said, I, I've just been at, at Photoshop for so many years that, I don't know, just taking the time to like really, really get used to the little, the little things. I don't know. I just, like, I have Photoshop, so why? Right? But I really, really do love that program, especially for inking. It's just, I... I'm kind of loath to do my sketching and inking there and then swap for color or whatever because I've kind of gotten used to the way... I've gotten used to the, the workarounds to make color look good um, in Photoshop, like painting. There are really some kind of things you have to just accept when you're painting in Photoshop. Um, just the way that it doesn't blend color naturally. Is Manga Studio uh, meant for manga only? No, it's totally not. You can do full-on painting stuff with it. There's a lot of cool stuff. Here's the other thing. Um, here's some new stuff that is not in Photoshop that you can do in Manga Studio. Now, okay, some of this stuff is kind of in Photoshop, but it doesn't work very well. So in Manga Studio, you can import 3D, 3D objects and use them as reference um, in a very easy way. It doesn't require a lot of horsepower, and um, which Photoshop's version does. And uh, it's easy to manipulate, which Photoshop's isn't. Um, you can also, there's also a window, a reference window where you can import 
images into the reference window and it just stays small over in the corner it doesn't get obtrusive and you can just like like you can go backward and forward through like 30 40 different reference images back and forth without it like having to like open another window or anything like that it just stays over in a little panel um it has perspective rulers which are probably the greatest thing about manga studio so you set up a horizon line and then you start like you like set vanishing points and then it automatically knows where the vanishing points are and it will intelligently snap to the right perspective line when you're drawing in a way that doesn't feel like you're fighting it it's really 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 cool like i really cannot say enough cool things about mega studio it's weird that i'm not using it right because like i like the, that program so much i'll make the jump i will i just like i said years years in photoshop The other thing too is that um, I do a lot of like doing board game stuff. I do a lot of work in uh, Adobe InDesign and um, in uh, Illustrator, and those things kind of like live update between each other and everything when you're using them. So that's another reason that I'm kind of still working in Photoshop a lot. Sorry. This dude's looking pretty good. Let me knock down the opacity on the uh, under sketch a bit more. So I can get a better look at him. I'm just zooming out so I can kind of like look at him as a whole. It's not bad. I'm gonna do the afro, I swear. I will do the afro, it's gonna happen. God help me, but the afro will happen. And look, Nana, he's kinda got a teen stash for you too. Look, wispy. There you go. I can give him some curls if you want. He's a beautiful man, this walrus. Such a man. So I'll be updating my Twitch, like the look of my Twitch layout and everything a lot over the next couple days. I'm going to try to add in all the links to my other stuff available easy for you guys so that you can find my YouTube page, which is Art of Rob, don't ask why, it's a long time ago, um, it's not Molten Ink, it's like one of the only things I have that isn't Molten Ink, um, but I got a lot of subscribers on there already, so I had to keep it, but they'll be, that'll be available, like, uh, I'm going to change up my panels, so all that stuff is, is easy to find, um, start doing some more, some more art and stuff for it, just to gussy up the page a bit a lot more effort to this and I might update some of my old tutorials uh, about perspective and such because now I've got a nice new mic and it doesn't sound like garbage when I talk except for my terrible voice which I can't do much about not all of us can have silky sexy voices like Oswaldo So jealous. So jealous. I'm gonna find you and eat your vocal cords and gain their power. Grizzly Goon Gaming, Walrus Hero, cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm fun with him. Walruses are not particularly unique, I guess, in fantasy stuff, but they're kinda cool. I've never really drawn a walrus hero before, or like a walrus warrior or whatever. I'm kind of enjoying it. If you have more than one walrus, is it walry? 
If it's not, it should be. Because then I think it's walruses. That's so boring. Ozzy heard his name. He wasn't paying attention. And he's like, wait, what? Walrus is the only animal I'm proficient at drawing at. <laughs> That's awesome. That's just, man, this is just adding to the legend of, of Osvaldo. Some say he can draw a walrus any time of the day. survives off nothing but tamales and the juice of the universe. They claim he doesn't understand the color yellow, but can kill a man from 30 paces with only the power of his mind. Oh, sorry, I was the psycho power, right? Psycho power. Not mind power. That was really weird for some reason. I feel like his calf needs to be way bigger. Hey, how was everybody's Christmas? Who got something? Somebody, somebody, tell me something cool you guys got. Uh, one of you guys got for Christmas. You like tamales? Who doesn't like tamales? Nice epic music too. Thank you. The ep, uh, the music is provided by uh, MachinimaSound.com. They provide uh, royalty-free music if you wish to use it in your videos streams, what have you. There's a lot of awesome stuff there. I'm going to continue to add to my Machinima Sound library because they're awesome dudes. I'm going to uh, pick up some of the premium stuff very soon because I'm really enjoying this. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to get muted if I used um, if I used the music. It wasn't going to get auto-muted. I just have to constantly... Um, fight with Twitch about it being royalty free and so far I have not had any issues so I am going to pursue this further got some shirts and money I also got some shirts and Scunny got a wake got his wake on tablet that's awesome skipped leg day he always skips leg day he's a walrus he just crawls around using the strength of his arms what you what you know about walruses 100% of your video on demands are muted. Nice. Dude, that is a, that's an epic percentage. You keep that up. I got a sick sweater for the two months where it's kind of cold here in Texas. What? It's not cold ever in Texas. Okay, you, what, what do you call cold? You tell me a temperature that you call cold and I will ridicule you, sir. Don't be all lying and saying like three three degrees Kelvin. I'll know when it's lying. I'll know. I live in the frozen north of Canada, sir. Winter is not coming in Canada. Winter is here. Winter has always been here. Winter just waits. I know Walry don't have ape noses. You don't know nothing. What do you know about walruses? Walry. Wal, 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 uh, big fat seals. Big 
Because all those walruses you got in Missouri, right? Walruses everywhere. You got sports teams named after walruses, right? In Missouri? St. Louis Walry. Also, what is that Walry? Because that's Wii, right? The, that Nintendo has told me that if you put two eyes, it's E. So Walry. Oh god, it's still going on. It is Chronicle. I messed up a face. Someone tied me out. <laughs> Walrus King of Nipples in Sweden, <laughs> Friends of the Sky Locks. <laughs> that is amazing. Now I'm interested in these Missouri Wall Rides. Tell us a story, Nana, about dead Missouri walruses. Just kind of guessing at where his legs should be. Usually I draw through these things. It's actually part of one of the tips is that you should always draw through. Um, what that means is that if you're drawing a three-dimensional object, like, um, Let's say you're drawing an arm uh, and you have like a band, you should draw all the way around like this so that you kind of know where the back end of whatever circle it is you're drawing or like a pattern like you're drawing it this way. You should try to like wrap it around and draw the back and draw through your object. Honestly, you should. I just, <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just want to keep drawing. I just want to keep going. I don't want to stop and like draw in some like structure, although now it's bothering me. I'm gonna have to do it! Girl! Alright, I'm doing it. I can't, I can't, I can't not do this. It's bothering me. <sighs> this is me drawing in the structure of the walrus leg. Just let me draw a walrus leg. I gotta structure it. Hello, ladies and gents. Hello, Chronicle. Nice to see you here. Chronicle Linkmaster Extraordinaire in the house. I share my general knowledge. Knowledge. Fancy pants knowledge word over here. What are, you, what are you, a Frenchman? Around here we call it brain smarts. Share my brain smarts. Ooh, fancy garage. Or the car hole. I know all about Frenchmen living in Canada. Frenchmen and their strange words and customs. Frenchman built my house with a chainsaw and a hammer. No joke. Saw them cutting big old stacks of uh, of two by fours with like just holding it in place. One dude was holding the big old bundle. They're gonna just cut it with a chainsaw. They're like, yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be accurate enough. Don't worry. We measured once. Nope, I'm from Philly. Wish it was somewhere interesting like Philly. Oh, it was pretty boring. We got. Um, uh, oh, hang on, I got this. We have. Hockey team that no one cares about. Oh, and we're the capital, right? Which 
which also is no big deal. We're not afraid of the dark. <sighs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> but you never had a New York hot dog? It's like, ugh. I mean, weird sizing issues. You know what? It might be okay, actually. With distance. No. No, it's bothering me. Yeah. Ottawa's kind of boring. I'm on the lookout to uh, be able to leave Ottawa. It's really expensive to live here too. I mean, cause like we have all the, all the federal politicians and stuff live here and they all get paid way too much. So like everything costs a ridiculous amount here. There's a lot of other places I could be living in Ontario uh, <laughs> where it wouldn't cost me an arm and a leg just to have like a small um, townhouse. Townhouses around here, like, and we're not talking like giant townhouses. They're pretty average-sized townhouses. Uh, I think we're hit. We're looking at six hundred thousand dollars for a for a moderate townhouse. No joke. That's what my house is worth now, almost. But I haven't paid off nearly a nearly any substantial amount of it it's nuts man my area is newer so the prices are a little bit lower but it's ridiculous my my mortgage is so high nuts but yeah like the modern size ones are like that mine's mine's much closer to 450 something like that maybe 4 450 but mine's mine's not super huge the 600 is seems to be like where all the all the nice places are where, where you want to live like i live pretty far outside the city at this point pretty much as far as you can get outside the city where it's still considered ottawa it takes me like a half hour drive to get to like kind of anywhere you would consider this Part of the city and i am in ottawa like this is not like outside of ottawa how do you change the look of your brush uh and from uh where your line will be drawn like now your ink is coming out of the edge of the circle well um i mean that's probably just got something to do with the stream and stuff like that because it does originate from the center of the circle uh it's just kind of hard to see on the stream i think but um, the brush, the the brush window, oop, this one, will allow you to change a lot of stuff. I usually keep all my stuff pretty basic. <laughs> Your GPA goes down on you every day. That's right. Oh God. Um. Yeah, it looks like it's coming to the edge of the circle, but it's really not. I think that's probably just from the stream, like some weird, some weird thing of the stream. But yeah, you can change all your stuff in here. Um, there's so much you can do. Like, I've got a lot of brushes. Like, if you look, if I bring this up, I do have a lot of, like, crazy brushes that do all sorts of weird things. I made a bunch of them, um, but I have a tendency to use really basic ones. I have this opinion with brushes, with art, uh, well, well, art software. If you know how to do something the hard way, like, say, painting clouds, right? If you know how to do something the hard way, if you get a brush that allows you to, like, speed up the process, you, there, your results will be better because you have, like, a better sense in your head of what you want your finished product to look like. It's gonna be better. So, my opinion is, is that you should learn how to do things with a simple, basic brush first. Like, learn it the hard way and then find a brush that will expedite it for you. If you do it the other way, you're gonna kinda just use the brush, like let's say you have a cloud brush, you'll just use it, and it might look like garbage, but since you're really not that experienced with painting clouds, you will just leave it like that and be like, well, that's how it's supposed to look. 
and that's ill-advised. I, I really do believe that you should teach yourself to do things without like the shortcuts at first. Yeah, the end result will be much improved. So it's 2.30 right now, my local time. I'm coming up to the end of the stream. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be ending around 3 o'clock. I do about two hour streams daily. So just letting you guys know we're coming up close to the end. I should be able to finish the inks on this guy and then maybe we'll color him on Monday. That might be fun. Oh, it's so sad. We're not going to get to put in the afro. you guys seen the uh, League of Legends or Dota cinematics? I want to make a game like that. I have not. It's Chronicle. They make the game look amazingly cool. Yeah, well, the cinematics and stuff are um, that kind of pre-rendered stuff. I think I think we're still a long way off from seeing that kind of stuff in-game. There's just so many shaders and stuff that have to be applied in kind of an artistic manner that it's just too much work. I would love to see a game that actually looked like those kind of cinematics. I don't think we're going to see it for a long time, though. It sounds kind of pessimistic, but it's just, I don't think it's happened for a while. I would love to see it though. <laughs> oh God, not hurt me. Ow, she knows. I'll hear about this later. Look, I've given you suggestions. You're not gonna do it. Told Nana. Who told Nana? Nana? Suddenly went to the south. Who told Nana? I told you guys specifically not to tell her. See you later, Grizzagoon Gaming. Thanks for coming in. Hope to see you again soon. We need a character with a mohawk. We kind of do. Is a 
is a troll with a mohawk, giant tusks, or oh, wait. This fish thing is not, I have to design this better or not do it. Let's try this again. Nobody tell anyone. Don't tell Nana that I did the afro. Don't tell her. See, now I know someone's going to tell her. Because y'all are rats. A lot of you. Except for you. You know who I'm talking about. Make it a stick with fish bones tied to it. I don't know if that's going to read very well. This is ridiculous. Skull of a big, big fish. I know it needs to, it needs to be fish related. It also needs to be bigger. with the links. Well, that actually helped. I was trying to speed rush through things. Chronicle is the Link Master.
there we go. You guys got your afro. Taking art to an epic score, making art to an epic score in the background. It's true, the epic, the epic song behind the uh, making of the afro. Truly, I was truly inspired to new heights. It looks amazing, Donna. It's luscious. We know he's getting all the walrus ladies. With that, with that dude. drop down a second layer a second layer of armor right here just like that wondering if I should uh, if I should put a piece of forearm armor here and I think I should for consistency don't afros get screwed up in water nah what kind of it floats but it's an afro Plus, he's got the pick to get it back in place. This is true. He's well prepared in case his afro becomes askew. He's all set. It's fine. And, uh, you know, walruses are great swimmers. So he just makes sure that the, uh, the afro never touches the water. That's what happens. Cannon. It's like when, when you're a kid and you go swimming with your mom and she's like, I don't want to go in the water because I'm going to get my hair. My hair is all going to get messed up. But then she goes in anyway and then she like does everything she can to like not let a single hair touch the water. Same thing, only with a walrus. Buckler on the left. Uh, buckler on left left right would be bear to lower lower weight in order to attack better for heavy gauntlet every girl this guy doesn't need to swim he's got a boat he's got a boat 
<laughs> wait, 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 wait. Why does he have a boat? Are, not, are you writing lore for this guy while we're like, while I'm drawing him? When, when did he get a boat? I turn around and suddenly he's got a boat. Everyone missed an A there. I don't know if he would need a buckler. I'm thinking this guy is more like a spear thrower. He's got his Wayland harpoon. Buckler on the left, right would be bear, uh, we bear to lower uh, weight in order to attack better. Gotcha, okay. He's got fishing spears. Be all up. <laughs> can't be all up in the water thrashing around trying to spear a fish, you'll scare it away. See, this is true. Therefore, Afro. And see, the, the reason he has the Afro is it casts a gr larger shadow into the water which attract the fish. They're like, hey, what's with this shadow? Let's investigate. And bam! The old spear in the eye. Guy uses his boat and killer instinct to get them fishes. Also, he's gay. Oh, okay. What does that have to do with his afro? Is, is it because he keeps his afro so well quaffed? I don't I don't understand the connection but I mean I'm not the one writing the lore yeah what are you saying right now I think I need an explanation Just gay. It's okay. Men enjoy his large fists. What? Slap with a fish to stun people. <laughs> Look, he's just a real hit in the bear bars. He's like an exotic bear. That smells a little bit like fish. But just a little. Got a golf bag. Range spear fish for a close escape. <laughs> Prefer backhand instead of fish. 
Look, he's not wearing enough enough tiger print or leopard print to be able to deliver a stunning enough backhand. Also, no hat. Or cane. So, yeah. Really could use a cane, I think. I think I need to name this guy Nanook. I think I think he has to be. Nook of the North with his musky fish smell and beautiful afro. All right, guys, it's three o'clock. We have come to an end of yet another Molten Art Stream. I hope you guys had a fantastic time. I did too. Look at this. We got this majestic creature with his lush afro and fish pick. Today was a day of days. Let us sing songs about it. Thank you so much for joining me. I will be back on Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for more Molten Art Stream. Come join me. We'll color this guy and make him even more amazing than he is today. Thanks, guys. See ya.